you don't mind, you can be upstanding and you can pick your Bible. Uh, we want to read um, a few scriptures. I want us to read from the book of Daniel, chapter 10. You read some verses, you skip and read others. You read from verse 1 to 3, then 7 to 8, and 18 to 21. Uh, let me read Daniel chapter 10 from verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a word was revealed to Daniel, who was named Belteshazzar. And the word was true, and it was great conflict. And he understood the word, uh, the, he understood the word, and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three weeks. I ate no delicacies, no meat or wine entered my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all for the full three weeks. Verses 7, we go to verses 7 and 8. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great trembling fell upon them, and they fled to hide themselves. So I was left alone and saw this great vision, and no strength was left in me. My radiant appearance was fearfully changed, and I retained no strength. Let's go all the way to verses 18, 18 to 21. It says, again, one having the appearance of a man touched me and strengthened me. And he said, O man greatly loved, fear not, peace be with you, be strong and of good courage. And as he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. Then he said, do you know why I have come to you? But now I'll return to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I go out, behold, the prince of Greece will come. But I'll tell you who is inscribed in the book of truth. There is none who contends by my side against this except Michael, your prince. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let's be seated. So once again, I want to uh, thank Reverend Joyce for, uh, for giving me this opportunity, and also for my general overseer for giving us uh, continuously these opportunities to come and minister to you. As you know, a few of our, elder, of our leaders were in Western helping elders uh, Sarah Burudi to lay to rest her loved one, and it went on very well, so some of them have not been able to come back, but we pray for them that they shall, uh, they shall come safely. We also want to acknowledge uh, the church admin, uh, Elder Chris, Deacon uh, Paul, and a few others that uh, uh, answered to the call uh, yesterday evening, and we are keeping well. God bless you so much for that participation. Amen. Now, the message that I want to bring us this morning is sustaining the breakthrough. And you can tell your neighbor, sustaining the breakthrough. Or better still tell them, sustain your breakthrough. Amen. Now, we have read from the book of Daniel, but I want to take us a few years before. Uh, we are going to go elsewhere, and then we would lay a foundation, then towards the end, you shall understand why, why we are talking about sustaining the breakthrough. Now, the book of Daniel is well appreciated as a sequel or a continuation to Jeremiah. You know, Jeremiah is a book that comes first, and it talks about the exile into which Daniel, in these scriptures that we have read, Daniel chapter 10, will be prophesying during the time of the, of the exile. Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah is a prophet that prophesies and oversees the exile. Jeremiah begins before the exile and takes the children of Israel uh, to, uh, to exile, or goes with them. And uh, the situation is so bad that Jeremiah, he, as a young man, he actually writes what we call a dirge or a mourning poem. That is the book of Lamentation. The book of Lamentation is in the Bible. So the book of Lamentation is a dirge, is a mourning, is a sad story as he saw things unfold. By the way, he's the same person who had prophesied, but he compiles a book about that. Now, according to Jeremiah, the appointed time for captivity for this exile that he had gone into was about 70 years. This you can find in Jeremiah 29 and verses 10. It says, For thus says the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished and, uh, at Babylon, I'll visit you and perform my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. 
And then the ne next verse, which every one of us loves, Jeremiah 29, 11, which says, For I know the thoughts that I, I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God does not leave us hopeless. Hallelujah. And there is a lot of weight in these scriptures. After seeing what God had prophesied and done for Israel, or to Israel and Judah, and they go into exile, you know, you can easily lose hope. But even in the midst of that, he raises up Jeremiah. We'll talk about Daniel. He raises up Jeremiah and says, I have a clear plan of how I want to move you. And it could be the same for you. Hallelujah. That what you, have, you are passing through right now, God has a perfect end for you. When I saw Sifiwe. So at around this time, captives are advised to marry and be married in the foreign land in anticipation and preparation for their return. Later during the exile, Jeremiah even demonstrates his hope for Israel's restoration by buying a field as instructed uh, by the Lord. You know, God comes and speaks to him and tells him, uh, Jeremiah, you are my prophet, and I know you are going into exile. Please do this. Buy a field as a way of encouragement to the people you have. I want to tell you, my brother, my sister, even you can give encouragement to your family members. Praise the Lord. Even in this flood, even if they have been affected, and many of us have been affected uh, by, this, uh, by this flood, even at a time like this, you can be able to offer them hope. Jeremiah offered his people some hope during that time. This, uh, Jeremiah 32, 9, it says, And I bought the field of Anathoth from Hananiel, Hanamel, my cousin, and weighed out the money to him, uh, 17 shekels of silver. This was indeed a tough time, but God, while punishing them, indicated a lot of hope to them. This helps us understand the nature of God. He does not delight in our suffering. The God that we serve does not delight in our suffering. Praise the Lord. You know, there are a few of us that have actually given up. Indeed, I know there is somebody watching me online. And he decided, she decided from last week, from last month, from last year, I'm not going back to church. And why? It's because of the things they have gone through. But we learn now from the story of Jeremiah and the people that have been taken to exile that even in those difficult circumstances, God still has an issue end. Praise the Lord. Can't we be like Job that in spite of the, 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 the problems that he went through, so much losing his whole wealth, all that he had you know, worked for, he still loved this God. Indeed, he even refused to curse God. And it was very easy. He could have cursed God and died. Now, Daniel is taken to Babylon. Uh, by, this time, by this time, Jeremiah is prophesying. There is a young man. And Daniel, uh, that young man is called Daniel. He is taken to Babylon as a young man. Along with him were other royalty. And three of them were especially close to him. Now, when we read the book of Daniel, the people we remember are usually four. It is Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But do you know the people, the, 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 the people that have been taken to the palace, not just to exile, to the palace were actually royalty. The Bible says are, you know, royalty. These were sons and daughters or maybe cabinet secretaries of governors or those that we call satraps according to scripture. They are the people that had been taken. But the four of them got a lot of favor from God and even in the foreign country. And this we shall be looking into. Daniel chapter 1 verse 6 talks about, it says, among these, why? Among this meaning this all royalty that was taken. Among these were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Those are their Jewish, their Hebrew uh, names before they, uh, they were given other names from Babylon. Verse 7 says, and the chief of the eunuchs gave them names. Daniel he called Belteshazzar, Hananiah he called Shadrach, Mishael he called Meshach, and Azariah he called Abednego. Now in Daniel chapter 9, Daniel chapter 9, prophet Daniel understands by reading the prophecies of Jeremiah that the exile was to last some 70 years. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Now, you know, even your life, some of those that engage with the word, you are very likely to know what God calls you to. Amen. This is Daniel. He is a very high-ranking official. Uh, just like the general that we laid to rest the other day. You know, he's a person who referred to scriptures. And so he referred to scriptures, even very recent scriptures. Because Jeremiah was actually almost like a contemporary. You know, he was coming before him and he's taking, uh, basically like taking uh, uh, from, over from him. And he understood that the exile which Israel, Judah is in, is going to last some 70 years. Now, bear in mind, this is Daniel. Now, what is Daniel? Daniel in the land of Babylon, he has had favor so much so he is a very high-ranking official. And I was giving an example in the morning, and I was saying, suppose, uh, you know, and that is an expectation of very many of us, especially the young. You know, God takes you to, to a country, and uh, maybe you are in the UK. Uh, you have just relocated to, to the UK, or you have been taken to the UK. And there, you get a job, a very good job, as a high-ranking official. As a high-ranking official. And you are speaking in tongues, and you can chase a few demons, or many demons. Can you really think about your home, you know, your village? You know, you know where you have come from. Amma, we don't have homes. We have homes. See, we know Shago, how it is. You know? And we are all looking. That's why we are in Nairobi and some of us don't even go back to, to Shago. This is Daniel. And it is going on very well for him in the other country. And uh, he is elevated. Now, he was very comfortable. He did not need to bother about anyone else. Yet the chapter, that is chapter 9. If you look at chapter 9, it dwells on intercession. This is a man who has everything. He is not even praying for himself. He is not rising up at 4. You know, uh, the, the hours that we rise, or midnight, to do the midnight raid, or the three o'clock raid. He is not rising up because of, uh, of his children. He is rising up because of the people that he has. You know, he is killed red, or the people that are around him. And I, you know, something came into my mind. A few of you, you have, you have old people, old folks at home. I saw this, I, I gave the example of my mom. I've seen my mom evolved, uh, evolved to that. That now my mom can rise up at 4.30 or 5 and take some quality time, not to pray for herself, to pray for the children. And as we are expanding, now he's not only praying for our, his children, he's also praying for the in-laws and he's also praying for the children. Now every time that you go and you are celebrating another one, she, there is an, your prayer Sasa ime iliwacha kuwa 30 minutes. It's not now 45 minutes. It's about one hour and more. But why do they pray? I want to tell you, an intercessor, that is what we call intercession, praying for others. Not to yourself, praying for others. You can only be an intercessor if you are rising above the materialistic you know, ent enticements of the world in which we are living. Your grandmother and your mother and your dad, they have no need of another plot. Even if it comes, it's just incidental. It's not something that is going to bother their minds. And for that reason, they can take time and pray. This is Daniel. Daniel was a young man, but now he is getting old. This is almost actually, you know, in the mid or towards the end of the, 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 the season. And therefore, he takes time to pray for the people, the people of Israel. And he is praying for what? He is praying that they may be able to be restored. Now, uh, what we shall understand, and we shall read those scriptures, is that it was designated 70 years for the captivity and for the exile. But the fact that it was 70 years, it does not mean that exactly on the day one of the 71st year, they would go back. I'm telling you, if you are in captivity, or if you are enslaved for whatever reason, there is no person, except for prisons, because they have a term. There is no person that is going to release you. So even in captivity, it was not going to happen. Yes, the designated time was 70, but they needed a strategy to get out. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, let me get back here. So intercession shows the ability of one soul 
to soar beyond the materialistic impressions. And uh, I was giving the, the examples of our older parents who become intercessors. Now we go to our text. In our text, Daniel chapter 10, Daniel takes time to fast and to seek the Lord on behalf of everyone. And this is not for a short period. It's not for three days. It's not for seven days. And seven days is a lot of work. You know, when uh, Pastor Joyce tells us to pray for some time, uh, not many of us are able to, to pray. But I want to tell you, there is a man of God who had everything but prayed. Not for a few days. The Bible says for three good weeks. That is for 21 days. That is Daniel chapter 10, verse 2 and verses. It says, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning. The word mourning there talks about fasting. In other words, I had, uh, you know, he had made sure that he is not going into luxuries. Verse 3 explains it very well. It says, I ate no pleasant bread. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all. Till three, works, uh, three whole weeks were fulfilled. And let me say, while I'm, uh, I'm at it here, that uh, it is very important also, while you are fasting, to know where you are in life. You know, for those that are beginning to advance in age, somebody who is talking about a fourth floor, a fifth floor, a sixth floor, and a seventh floor, uh, I want to encourage you, please, even when you are fasting, know how you are fasting. Don't just fast and do dry fast. When you are younger, we can do that. Manaiswa sefewe. Yeah, there are a few things. There are things that are called phosphorus and potassium. I don't know how they get into the body, but when they get lost, it is usually very difficult to get them back. Praise the Lord. That is a, that's a class, and you should pay me. I ate no pleasant bread. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all. Till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Daniel understood the season for his fellow Israelites and went ahead to ask for divine intervention. They are out in the country. They have been taken exile, not just the four of them, but the whole land of Judah. They are in that place. And he realizes there is nobody who can help these people. Even, seven, even though 70 years are coming to a completion, we need a strategy on how we shall go back. So when God spoke concerning your life, when God spoke concerning your life, that you are going to get a wife when you are 20, uh, 22, and now it is 23. I want to tell you sometimes some of this you have to engage a little bit of prayer. Nobody is agreeing with me. Praise the Lord. Just because God has said that the exile was to last 70 years, that was not a guarantee they would enjoy it. Breakthroughs, and I want you to hear this, breakthroughs have to be bathed. Breakthroughs have to be maintained. And breakthroughs have to be sustained. And today we shall be talking about maintaining or sustaining those breakthroughs. Hallelujah. It's no wonder that we all hold great promises about ministry, about family, about uh, businesses uh, from God on what we can accomplish. But we never attempted or we never come to see its fruition. Prepare to usher breakthroughs, to maintain them and to sustain them even though you are very sure that they were promised to you. Now, this helps us, you know, to be opened up to a different realm of spirituality. Now, verse 7 and 8, uh, that is Daniel 10, 7 and 8. The Bible says, and I, Daniel, alone, and that is very important, I, Daniel, alone, saw the vision. Why is he saying alone? Daniel was going around with his bodyguard. He was going around with his age. And something happened in the field. This did not happen when he was sleeping. It happened in the field. It says, and I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great trembling fell upon them, and they fled to hide themselves. So I was left alone and saw this great vision, and no strength that was left in me. My radiant appearance was fearfully changed, and I retained no strength. This is a man of God. Uh, we know the testimonies that we hear about Daniel. He was a man of discipline, a man that was given to prayer, and he was working with God. So much so that even when he was governing in that land of Babylon, you know, God uh, gives him an encounter, not in the night when he's alone, but he gives an encounter when he has everybody else. Do you know God can speak to you even during lunch at your workplace? Amen. 
In fact, God can speak to you during the Christmas party. Praise the Lord. I was telling the first church that, uh, you know, we have matatus, and uh, now Kenya is known for the matatu culture. But, uh, and sometimes some of us innocently enter into a matatu because it is going to the direction that we are going. And you enter, and you sit pretty. Then all of a sudden, the prison worship of the kingdom of darkness begins. And for the next one hour, maybe there is you know, jam like there is now because of water. For the next one hour, you are in that matatu, you can do nothing, and you know, hell is bubbling up in that place. Do you know God can still speak to you? Praise the Lord. God can, if you are tuned up with God, like Daniel was, you can be with everyone else, even people from your home, people from your uh, alumni, people you know, that you are used to in your workplace, and you can hear God. This is what happened in verses 7 and 8, that Daniel is walking around. Maybe they have just uh, come from a meeting, and they are walking, but God speaks to him. Hallelujah. It is good for us. I want us to make sure that we reach to these levels where God does not prepare to come to you. He does not even cause you to sleep so that he may speak to your life. Now, uh, Daniel chapter 10 and verses, uh, verses, uh, uh, verses uh, let me go back there. I slipped away. Amen. Daniel chapter 10, that was verse 7 and 8 that I had read. Let me go back there. Okay. So Daniel understood the season for his fellow Israelites. He understood that this was the season for them to go and possess what God had prepared for them. They recognized that something was happening, but they did not experience it. They were around him, but they did not experience it. God interacted with Daniel during this time because of his fellowship, of his communion, of his working with him. Daniel was in tune with God. And the uh, then verses 11 says, And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak to you, and stand upright. For now I have been sent to you. This is an angel speaking to him. And when he had spoken these words to me, I stood up trembling. The, the next two verses, Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and, and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. Verse 13, I want you to underline it in your scripture because it will be forming a basis. It says, the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia. I don't know whether you have understood. Verse 11 says, and he said, O Daniel, man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak to you, and stand upright for now I have been sent to you. And when he has spoken to me, I stood trembling. He said, fear not from, from the first day. Now, it is very interesting that God sometimes answers us when we are beginning you know, our season of prayer. It is possible that uh, when we started our 40 days of prayer, on 2nd of January, some of us received their breakthroughs. Praise the Lord. It is possible that you who went to Catalonia, when you were in the Matatu, going to Catalonia, God did what? God answered. And if you are going to Heaven's Gate, even before you arrived in Heaven's Gate, you know, that explains why. Sometimes you go to a prayer mountain, and you have a whole list of prayer points. And you stay there for three days or seven days. And you never pray for any of those. Why? Because the prayers were? Daniel began to pray. And he had, you know, put it in his mind that he was going to pray for 21 days, three weeks. But this angel who comes later tells him, now man greatly loved. I've been sent to you. And I've been sent because from the first day that you began to pray, I was sent with an answer to your prayer. So the prayer had been already answered. Verse 13 says, but, tell your friend but, 
Hapo diyo kizungu mkuti hiko. The Bible talks about the prince of Persia. The prince of? Let me tell you, brethren, the fact that a prophecy came, and that prophecy was powerful, you even fell and some assorted, does not necessarily mean that you have what it is spoke about. Praise the Lord. It does not necessarily mean that you have it. You have to contend for it. This is Daniel. He understood how the spiritual realm works. He was a righteous man. He could just have engaged God for two minutes and tell him, God, time has come. You know, help me to lead these people. The Bible says he sought God on how this would happen. The Bible here says the prince of Persia resisted me for 21 days. In other words, his season of prayer ended by the prince of Persia arriving there. Here Daniel again introduces us to the angelic realm. The answer to his prayer was actually granted the first day and a messenger, an angel, this angel is Gabriel, dispatched. Yet the prince of the world order of Persia resisted his progress. The answer could not have arrived in time. The breakthrough, though granted, was delayed by resisting principalities. And this introduces us to spiritual warfare. Brethren, you can't work and walk in this life if you are not engaging in warfare. The Bible says, ever since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violence. And it's only the violent, the people who introduce themselves to warfare, that shall take and possess it and by force. Praise the Lord. You're talking about sustaining the breakthrough. Even getting it, you have to war for it. Hallelujah. Now, a scripture, Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 12, the Bible says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And I was telling the, the first church, you know, if it is flesh and blood, to naiza gonga mutu ngumi atupatia promotion. Yes? Yeah, to nasema we umeku make discriminate nini 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 unampiga ngu? Eh, diogu supervisor. <laughs> but we war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of this darkness, of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that he may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all that, to stand. Now, I don't know whether you realize, in Ephesians 6.12, it talks about principalities, powers, Rulers, you know, spiritual weakness, and it talks about hierarchies. Do you know the kingdom of darkness is organized? And that's why we must be organized. That's why sometimes you need authority. We had a very powerful second service, and, uh, you know, we were told, you know, even when you are doing, you are obeying God, be discharged by an authority. When I say, I usually tell those people, even those people who pray, when you're going, you are going, I know you, are, you know the demons that attack your place. See, you know them. Yeah, they are the familiar demons. You know, the, the same demons, Ulebi, uh, Nini, Nini. Don't just walk from Nairobi and go there. Please let even your growth center pastor know. You might even be senior to him in age. The kingdom of darkness is organized. And if you understand military, it is not about the hate or the width of the person, it is basically where they rank. And therefore, when you are sent by a rank, a certain rank, you know, you are going to go through, all gates are going to be open for you. The same thing. You say, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness. Now, these principalities, I want you to understand this, they manifest themselves as ordinary things, sometimes as governments and administrations. You know, legislative laws. Don't we have legislature, uh, no, legislature that makes sure that the church cannot worship or forces us to accept LGBTQ? There are places, you know, there are places uh, where that LGBT things are being elevated beyond what we stand for in Christ. Is it not happening in China, you know, where they, they, they have banned by laws? There is a law standing about uh, against you know evangelism even in india in places like uh, uh, middle east all those things that those are princey 
principalities. Praise the Lord. And some of them could be as easy. <laughs> they could be as simple as a community attitude. Yes, you may talk about it. We are all Nairobians now. Eh? Haven't you come from a place where you have a community attitude? Community attitude. I'm talking about tribal attitudes. Eh? Community attitude. Sisi ni hawa na tunafanyanga hivi. Na tufanyangi hivi. And they become principal. They hinder us from getting uh, our breakthrough. So it could be a community attitude propagated by individuals or even religious movements. These are principalities that we have to contend with. These forces have one objective and it is to stop the move of God. It is to stop the advancement of the kingdom of God. Even after breakthrough is granted, it may, it may be so much delayed that it arrives only when it is too late for us. That's why, brethren, we have to engage in prayer. We cannot continue the way we started. We must engage somehow in prayer. You must find yourself praying. At, you must be organized in the place of prayer. Hallelujah. Sustaining the breakthrough. Amen. Another scripture that may help us there, and the same thing, is 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. It says, just like uh, Ephesians 6, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, and we do, we are in the flesh, in other words, we have bodies to ourselves. We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not canon, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. In other words, what we have in Christ can bring down strongholds. Do you know what strongholds are? The ones that he's talking about, it is thought patterns. Thought patterns, eh? That you have a way of thinking that makes it difficult. You know, for the, a, long, a long time, the church in Africa thought that it could not do things. In fact, it had waited so much for Muzungu because Muzungu came with pomp and color. And do you know where Muzungu got his resources? Just around us. He was selling one thing from this side and coming and build the, building the church on this other side. I lost you. Eh? <laughs> it says, those are strong things that you know, tell you, Kwenu, there is nobody who has ever earned 50,000. The person who earned most, he had 36,522. And, you know, if it, that comes to the bank, even the bank will call you. You know, that kind of, that is a prince, <laughs> that's a stronghold. The Bible says, verses 5, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Who said you cannot get that job that you are looking for? I want to tell you, it is possible for you to get it. And who said that you must bribe for you to get that contract? No, it's not a must. You are going to get it. Please, you can get that. You can receive that as your word. Amen. Amen. You can receive that contract. Yeah, I know another one. You know, you saw it in the newspaper, but because it was 500 million, I want you to tell you, go back to that page and apply. Yeah, we need ship forts. And you are the ones to build the ship forts, about 10 of them. Praise the Lord. I don't seem to have any witness on that. Amen. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, Paul here is writing to Corinthians, a spiritual church yet with a lot of issues there, and Ephesus. Ephesians. And Ephesus was a metropolis, a cosmopolitan city where there were many religious persuasions, but he was quick to remind them to contend for their breakthrough with a little bit of warfare. Praise the Lord. He tells them, you know, we are not warring against flesh and blood, but we have powers, we have tools. And he tells them that these tools are able to bring down imaginations and things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. You know, just for, uh, just for you to, to know, some of this is Jesus' name. We have been given a name that is above every name, by which every knee bows, and every tongue confesses. We have the blood of Jesus. The Bible says that blood speaks concerning us. And that speaking is advocating. It advocates for us. In other words, that blood 
testifies. It goes to the court on our behalf, the blood of Jesus Christ. We have the sword of the Spirit. Hallelujah. The word of God. We have the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, with which we can be able to, uh, to put down all the works of Satan. And then we also have the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The friend, the Holy Spirit, the comfort of the teacher. And then we have baptisms. By the way, baptism is one of the tools that you can use for warfare. Let me tell you, if you are not baptized by immersion, it could be the reason you are still struggling. And we can baptize you. Myself and Elder Chris, we can stop everything else and go and baptize you. And you can be delivered. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, if there are candidates, you just tell us. We are going to baptize you. Baptism, either in water or even in the Holy Spirit. And of course, we have the mighty angels. So Daniel again introduces us to a third dimension of warfare. And this is just about where I'll be terminating. Daniel chapter 10 and verses 20 and verses 21. I know many of you have never seen this scripture. But let's read. It says, we are going to read it. I'm going to read it in ESV, but we are going to read it uh, in KJV. It says, then he said, Daniel 10, 20. Then he said, do you know why I have come to you. But now I'll return to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I go out, behold, the prince of Greece will come. But I'll tell you what is inscribed in the book of truth. There is none who contends by my side against this, except Michael, your prince. Uh, KJV, 20. Uh, because I want to put uh, 20. It says, then it say, said he, no as uh, knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee. And now I will return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I'm gone forth, lo, the prince of Gracia shall come. Verse 21. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael, your prince. Let me help you understand. Now, Daniel has been praying and he started to pray. And the Angel Gabriel told him, from that first day when you began to pray, I was dispatched from heaven, but I was resisted by a principality called the Prince of Persia. And for that, we fought, and then Michael was summoned, and he came to help me, and therefore, Kupenya, and I have brought this answer to you. Now, you have received the message that you desired from God, and so you can continue. But... As I leave you, I must go back. And as I go back, I shall again meet with this prince of Persia. Now, when the angel Gabriel is going back and he meets with the prince of Persia, that is not our humanly business. That is God's. He takes care of his angels. He knows how he empowers them. He knows how he fights those wars. But he says there, and that is what I was telling you, most of you may, may not have seen when I go out, behold, the prince, go back to verse 20, KJV, what does it say? The prince of? <laughs> this is where the problem is for the church. The prince of Gracia shall? Basically what he's saying is, I, Gabriel, am gone. But as I go, you shall encounter another problem. Now you, not me. You shall encounter another. And this is the prince of Gracia. Now the prince of Gracia has one mandate from the kingdom of darkness. It is to fight your breakthrough. He comes to fight your breakthrough. I give examples, and these are true examples. You have applied for a job. You go for the interviews, and you get the job. They even call you and they give you the letters which you sign. And they tell you, you go for two, three days. Eh? Uh, you know, you go and sign, you know, look at them. And then you come and present. And the, you even say, uh, after you come, we are going to tell you when you are going to report. Then one week goes. Then two weeks go. Then three weeks. Same even in contracts. Three weeks go. And you even walk into that place. And we are still doing something. Uh, we will call you. And you wait now for another two weeks. They, 
they call you. And then it goes, you have written five emails, ten emails, and nothing is, did you receive the job? Yes, you received the job, I mean, by, virtually, by the fact of the, uh, you are, you know, you are qualified by, by all means. But you can't be able, this is the prince of grace. Let me tell you, it is the same. You have waited for many years to get married. Now, kapata ka, kapata mutu, sika mutu, kapata mutu. And you got someone. And you have quoted, and there was nothing sinister about that. And then Pastor Joyce graciously comes and walks you down the aisle. And then three weeks are not over. Yeah? Uh, three months are not over. And then issues begin to crop up. Issues you cannot, you cannot define. It's not even pombe. It's not even going out of the marriage. Issues you cannot be able to. The prince of Russia. Brethren, from when we began to pray and when we began this theme of advancing for conquest, I can guarantee you there are people here who received their breakthroughs. Some of them on 2nd of January, the year 2020. Full blessing. They got their promotion then. They got their job then. Full. It's, it's not half of it. Some of them got their fiancés. So as we are still advancing and even looking for where that conquest and fight is. But them they have us already. But they can tell us. Some few problems have come up. The prince of? The prince of Gracia. It is important for us to know while we are advancing for Congo, God will be faithful. And he's going to give us what we have desired of him. He is going to bring it to our way. But we need to maintain and sustain that breakthrough. And this can only happen in spiritual warfare. Praise the Lord. You know, you do not, as human beings, we do not instruct angels. You cannot tell angel, you know, angel, go and uh, deal with that business. It is our prayer that activates heaven. Praise the Lord. Indeed, I've said that angels are servants. Angels are servants, and they work according to the roster of heaven. But you know how the roster is, is, is written? It is written through your prayer. When you pray, when you continue indulging, so if two of us are there, and uh, Pastor Kishoke is, uh, you know, engagement in prayer is, is a bit more, then inaruka. Kwa rosa inafanya nini? His response goes before mine. Praise the Lord. And that's why some of us to kopale chini, and because others are still praying more than us, see, see, we are always at the bottom, and we never come up for us to be considered. Hallelujah. Are you catching something? We are talking about sustaining the breakthrough. Yes, we are advancing for con and God is giving us this, this thing. He is giving it unto, unto us. So, the angel Gabriel, after faithfully delivering the message and good news to Daniel, he anticipates warfare as he goes back. The same prince of Persia, as I told you, he had contended with, was to harass him going up. And as I said, you have no business with the angel returning. That is the work of God. But there are angels descending. Yours is the angel descending. For Daniel, it was not difficult. Daniel had a discipline of prayer. In other words, in contending with the prince of Gracia, the easiest way to sustain and to maintain your breakthrough is to dedicate to the glory of God. Please catch that. The easiest way to sustain and maintain your breakthrough is to dedicate it to the glory of God. This only happens with thanksgiving and testimony and with prayer. Amen. What does the revelation say? It says they overcame by the, by the blood of the lamb, first of all, and by the word. Testimony. We are not going to expose you, but testimony is enough. You know, God has worked miracles for you. Last year, you had nothing. By the end of the year, you have a house. And you have not told anyone. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we know there are people who, who don't like testimonies. If it is complete, tell it to your growth center. We know you don't want us to hear about it in church because our expectation may be higher. We might be expecting more tithe from you. Praise the Lord. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Testimony. Let me tell you, testimony builds men. We were here on Friday, and people were giving testimonies. And, and uh, there's an usher who also blesses my, my, my heart. He, he gave a very powerful testimony. We laughed. In fact, the joy of the Lord broke us out of our hearts. You know, he gave us stories and uh, praise the Lord. Tell us what has happened. You know, no one knows what has happened. There was a case, maybe at home, and somehow God has made it, you know, has made way for you. Don't just tell us. Tell the people in your ministry. If your breakthrough is only you us to enjoy, and it brings no glory to God, let me tell you, it is susceptible to the Prince of Gracia. Amen. If you're not testimony, by the way, it is surface, it is cement. That's why they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the what? For you to overcome, for you to surmount, for you to go to the next level, you need to testify of the goodness of the Lord and of what God is doing. Hallelujah. Amen. So he says, uh, you know, I overcame, I overcame him. This is the testimony of Gabriel. I overcame him by incorporating Michael, the warrior prince. Let angels work with you through prayer to God. We do not instruct angels, as I told you. They are dispatched servants attending to you following the roster of heaven. And they are prepared. That roster is prepared through answered prayer. So what are we saying? So what are the lessons from the story of Daniel chapter 10? What do we learn from my message sustaining the breakthrough? Number one is just highlighting, just uh, highlighting, it says, be an intercessor. Amen. Amen. Be an in and pray and fast. It is a sign of maturity. If you can be able to pray for others, where were you have matured. But if the only prayer that you make is about your shoes and your dress and your money, uh, we'll give you another two years. And it might be very slow. Be an, in, an intercessor. That's why he talked about our parents. You know, they, have not, they, are, they are living for nothing else. They are living for their community. They are living for you and your children, they are living for their relatives and friends. They have gone beyond their materialistic things. And number two, contend, fight to keep the breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Contend, fight to keep the breakthrough. It is the season of conquest. Let's be upstanding.